What is up, you guys? Grab your coffee. Um, so, I really wanted to do a video for you guys on what got me to the point that I'm at right now. Unfortunately, um, I'm doing all this stuff with the bike in between shifts at work and like that kind of stuff. So, I'm on a time crunch. So, where I'm at right now, I feel like I'm a good two hours away from firing it up and seeing what happens. So, that's where we're at. Um, huge, huge shout out to my boy Brian636 because <clears throat> he uh, threw me a tip on my last video that saved me a lot of time and trouble. Badass Industries frames are, in my opinion, a must-have. And if I ever had to buy another 636 for whatever reason... If it didn't have one of these on it already, that'd be the first thing that I went and bought for it. Um, not only because of strength and integrity and that sort of stuff, and it looks cool, but there's four bolts that connect the back half of the frame to the front half. And if you pull those four bolts out, the, the whole front of the bike just kind of comes off. So now, the motor and everything is all exposed. So same process as yesterday. Took apart uh, the head, took it all off. You know, cams, all that stuff. That's all down there because I'm using all the parts. 100% of, you know, the cams, everything that came off of the parts motor is going to go on here. And these cam caps um, that go on there, this guy, um, they note it in the repair manual that those are machined specifically for that head. So if you ever change the motor out, make sure you put the legit one. So what have I done? Um, let's take a look at our damaged head uh, I'm gonna actually turn the flash on once so let's take a look at our damaged head there's the insides obviously identical to the new one but our crack which is that bad boy right there is what caused the issue this is on the timing side and it runs halfway down the head and that's why we're doing this so there's our new head uh, I already cleaned the uh, the valves and, uh, and and the actual cylinder head. And then also, uh, you can see this is an idea of what the top of the pistons look like. Mine were way worse. So I also just took a regular uh, little wire brush and some gasoline and cleaned all that up. So um, these holes around the cylinders... Uh, it appears that they've got some water and antifreeze in them. So I'm going to suck that out with the vacuum. Uh, that's probably some gas too. So do I really want to suck that out with the vacuum? Because I feel like the whole, you know, kaboom explosion thing, electric motor, you know, gasoline vapors. Anyways, uh, I probably need to get that out of there because I don't even know how deep those are. So I'll find a way to soak those up. So anyways, today, or like right now, we are going to uh, slap the new head on um, and go ahead and, and get it uh, bolted up. I uh, printed out a copy uh, last night at work of my repair manual, or at least the pages that I need because it's 500 pages of repair manual, so I wasn't printing all that. Um, so I've got the pages that I need. Pay close attention to the black boxes because those are going to have notes that say, hey, don't do this or be careful when you do this. Um, and then also, of course, as I mentioned before, uh, torque specs are super important. So, uh, anyways, I'm going to get started on this and I'll try to update you guys as I go. Again, I'm on a time crunch because I have to work tonight and I worked all night last night, haven't slept, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to try to get this thing running before I go take a nap before work. So stick around. All right, guys. So here's where we're at. I've laid the new gasket. Well, the old gasket, but... Uh, the gasket onto uh, the head. I, I didn't use a new gasket. Uh, that's another story for another time. Anyways, um, take a wire coat hanger and pull your, your timing chain out. That way it doesn't fall back down in there because if it falls down in the crankcase after you've got all this bolted up, you're probably going to be mad. <laughs> Refer to your handy dandy repair manual. This will be 5-21 for the 636. Um, here's that note that says the camshaft cap is machined with the cylinder head, so make sure you don't use a different one. Um, so it says, install the new head gasket and knock pins. 
uh, put some oil in there, which it's still kind of wet with oil, so it's cool. So the nine cylinder head bolts, these are the ones that are inside. Um, basically, um, it says nine millimeters or 10 millimeter. I'm not sure what they mean. I think they mean that there's nine of them, but there's more than that. So I don't really understand that. Anyways, it says first torque them to 20 uh, nanometers or 14.5 foot pounds. So that's going to be uh, your, your big torque wrench. And then it says, finally, you're going to torque them down to 30 foot-pounds or 40 nanometers. So I guess they want you to torque them all down to that first and then come down and re-torque them. So um, install the camshaft position sensor, which we definitely have to do. I'm glad I didn't forget that. Um, so. Okay, okay, guys, here we are. New heads on there. Coat hanger I was telling you about is holding the timing chain. Time to start torquing this stuff down. Initial torque is going to be in the order that's listed here. Uh, focus, 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 please. Hello. 20 nanometers, 14.5 foot-pounds, or 40 nanometers, 30.0 foot-pounds once you, uh, once you, uh, do them once so you go through that whole sequence once and then go back through it in this same order um, and torque all those down so I'm gonna go ahead and get those started I gotta get my other torque wrench and uh, we're gonna slap these babies in here 30 foot-pounds is a lot more than it sounds like though so this is super sketchy because torquing stuff as much as I love it I've torqued stuff before and uh, stuff broke so we're gonna try not to break any okay okay guys this is my torque wrench uh, this is one I got from Harbor Freight. They're about 19 bucks a piece. You'll see down here. I don't know how you can see it. Let's see if I can get it to focus for you. Uh, okay, there we go. So you can kind of see it there, but I've got it set to... I've got the mark on uh, the shaft at 10, and I've got it turned to the 4.5, which would be 14.5 foot-pounds, which is what we're going to torque all these bolts to initially on the inside um, in a sequential order with the 10 millimeter 12 point socket. So uh, get started with that and I'll kind of show you guys how it works. Okay guys, all our bolts are in and we're torqued to 14 and a half pounds. And basically, if you don't know, a torque wrench is just an oversized ratchet um, that can be set for different pounds uh, of torque. And uh, basically when you put this guy on here, you're gonna feel like it kind of tight and then you're going to listen for a really distinct click, and I'll see if I can get it to do it. Right there. So when that click comes, and you'll feel it give a little bit, you don't want to tighten any longer at that point because you've reached your torque. So now that all these are down at 14 and a half, we're going to go ahead and start the same sequence over to uh, 30 foot-pounds, and our head will be fully installed. Um, and these little numbers, you can see the number one right there indicates the number one screw and you're going in a crisscross pattern. Um, like these screws out here also have numbers. So you uh, you really want to follow your torque spec. Uh, as I said before, I'll keep hounding that over and over. And because we did a, a halfway torque and then a full torque, what we're doing there is avoiding uh, the head warping. Because you don't want your head to warp for what should be very obvious reasons. So anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and torque these all the way down and then we'll continue. Okay guys, good news. The head is torqued completely. Everything is looking solid other than this two-tone paint job I've got going on on the motor, but that's fine. So now comes the most important part, in my opinion, of all of this, and that's cam installation and timing. This has to be, in my mind, of this particular job, the most important part of all of this because Timing is what's going to determine whether your bike runs like shit or not. Okay, so timing can be the root of a lot of issues on why motors don't run smooth and that kind of stuff. You know, like on this motor, for instance, timing and throttle bodies are a big deal. So you get your timing right, and then in turn get your throttle bodies right, and it'll run like gold. Uh, the thing is, is that timing, of course, you have to take the motor apart to do throttle bodies. You don't. So mm -hmm this is where it pays uh, to get it right here so 
Um, the best way to do this is to get your ratchet to turn the, uh, where's my light? Hold on, hold on. Let me get my light. You're going to want to turn the crank sprocket down here. Um, you'll see a 14, which is what's showing right there, and a little line that comes off of it. And you're going to want to line that line up with, uh, take the gasket off right here. There's a notch right there where the cases meet. So, because there's a case here that you could split if you wanted to, but that's where that notch is. You really want this sprocket, it has to, that line, the timing line, has to match up to that line. And you're going to need to keep that right there. And when you put the cams in, they need to fit as close to where they should be uh, as you're going to get them because you really don't want to try to move them around too much once you have this sprocket set. So I'm going to do all that real quick. I'm going to need my hands. So um, I'll record after I get it put together. I, I feel like before I moved any further too, I wanted to make this a note. Your cams are different. One says EX. That's your exhaust cam. That would be this guy here. And this other one says IN for intake. That's your intake cam. They're definitely different. So. Your exhaust side is of course here, where your exhaust manifolds are, intake side is over there. So you do have two different cams, so don't forget when you're putting them on and don't put them on wrong.